Now, in order to form deltas, then, right, you have to have two major ingredients. One is the flow of water. And you can see here those regions in the world where there are major flows of water uh, here designated in cubic kilometers of water flow per year. And with that flow of water is the delivery of sediment. And you can see here those hot spots, those places in the world where there is a combination of a, of a watershed that is of a significant size with a significant precipitation, which is the fundamental driver, right, of the water transport, and that delivers sediment down to the continent margin to build a landform on which deltas uh, are, are uh, developed. And fundamentally, in those three zones, are these two diagrams. One is this diagram of fluvial transport that describes the various aspects and various mechanisms by which that sediment can be transported down through the alluvial systems from the sources of erosion to the zones of deposition. And there are two major points I want to make here. One is that there is a sus suspended sediment component. This is what's very obvious because when you look at a body of water that's flowing by your backyard or wherever in your community and it's turbid, most likely turbid because of the sediment that is transported. What a lot of people don't realize, which is I'm going to show you here in a second, which is so important to us down here in the lower part of the Mississippi River watershed, is what's known as bed load transport. This is still sediment that is moving along these alluvial systems and by the forces of momentum by, uh, by movement of water that actually is transporting a large part of the sediment that builds the land upon which we are sitting here today. And here are the forces, the fundamental forces that describe the simple process by which deltas are built. And it is the forces in, that start out with number one, a sediment particle that is sitting on the bottom and not moving. And the key is getting the, the forces of lift that's required to get that particle up and and, and, and part of the water uh, momentum that transports it downstream. So this lift that you, uh, this particle from the phase of being settled on the bottom of a stream to where it is actually suspended, right, by which it can be transported is critical. And that's the first part process, and that is a function of the flow rate of water and the size of the mass of the particle. I'm going to show you the second relationship. Second is keeping that sediment particle suspended. Because if getting it eroded and up in the water column is one part, but getting it transported from the Himalaya down to the, the, uh, the, 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 the continental margin of the delta requires a continuous force of energy to maintain that particle up suspended in the water column. So you have these various fundamental processes, boundary layer and lateral sublayer. You've got Reynolds number. This is critical, knowing exactly when that transition phase is going to occur from one part of the physics uh, to another. The Bernoulli effect, this is one of the things I'll never forget from Mrs. Finch uh, lecture. And this, this is a critical piece of the formula uh, to understand building deltas and that is because we have to put in just position erosion, transport, and deposition. And the reason I'm spending so much time on this is in a second I'm going to get into what's wrong with the Delta. Why we're losing more wetlands in the Louisiana Delta than any other wetland landscape uh, in the United States, except for our and, and, uh But those are inland wetlands. Ours are coastal. Uh, and, and what can be done to fix it? This is not a story of gloom and doom of what's wrong. What I want to show you at the end of this is fundamentally what the fix is, and fundamentally it's all about the food. So this is a diagram. This is it. It shows the three zones, erosion, transport, and deposition. This is the Juleson diagram, and it shows the relationship between the diameter or mass, basically, of a grain and the average velocity. 
And what you see here is it might take a grain of 0.1 millimeter. Gallery gift requires a threshold, a threshold of flow to actually lift that particle up and get it moving down a stream or along a stream. But then it takes less energy to keep that same particle transported. So the key is the high energy it takes to get it lifted up into suspension, then it requires less energy to keep it transported. Then this is the other key threshold here. And that is the threshold by which the energy is less relative to the side of that particle. That particle falls by gravity back down to the bed and becomes the positive. That's the process that builds land. It is that process of going from what's transported, and I'm going to use the word supply, sediment supply, what gets transported to a region, and what gets the top. And so basically, these three components are the fundamental physics of how Delta works. And the connection that we have here in New Orleans with Memphis, with Minnesota, with, with, with Missouri, with Ohio, and that is those zones of erosion that then supply sediment that is then transported and then builds the delta downstream here of Louisiana, known as the Mississippi Delta. Now, if, to get the real sense of, you know, these are not just little suspended particles of silt and small grain sizes, if I want to show you this picture early on, this is a the version that was actually open. This is a flood control structure, excuse me. And we have several of these along the Mississippi River. You heard a lot about these in 2011 because as the river was rising, there were all these major decisions made of the, of the consequence of sequencing the opening of various structures to relieve the flooding, potential flooding of the Mississippi River. When a structure like this is open, when you look at what I call the outfall area downstream, this is the river here, what is flowing through these structures, and here's the deposition area. In that deposition area, you'll find sand dunes. It is an incredible phenomenon. To, and, and one right up here, when you're going up to the airport, drive past the airport, there's, a, there's one called uh, the Bonnie Carey Spillway. This picture is actually taken. That's the Bonnie Carey Spillway right in the background. And this is from the 2011 flood in the deposition zone and these are large particles of sand that were carried by the river, carried from upstream. And as soon as that water flows through the gates, velocity reduces, deposition occurs. These are not little pieces of mud. These are sand dunes that this river is carrying down uh, to the delta. So the physics of the delta, we, we, we have the various forces of gravity, how the water and the flow of the water actually can overcome the forces of gravity by suspending sediments, transporting them, and then creating land in zones of deposition. But it's not all about the river. What is fascinating about landforms is that the physics of what I just described, yes, supplies the sediment, but the movement of that sediment also is very strongly connected to the physics of tides and waves. And in fact, what we find is various deltas have different shapes and you can actually link the specific shapes of those landforms to the specific forces that tides and river and waves that interact on moving that sediment once it's delivered to the continental margin and forming either these cuspate, lobate, elongate types of structures. In fact, the physics are very well defined here that you can actually go from flow Sediment suspension side, this is mud silt, sand, and gravel, and, 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 and uh, uh, gravel and sand size. Remember, it is size and flow, right, are the critical two components, but you can actually, my point here, predict what the landforms are based on those combination factors, such that you have a river dominated, has a very distinct landform compared to tide dominated landscapes compared to uh, more linear uh, features parallel to the shoreline that you see here in uh, coastal areas where sand is and sediment are, 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 some are delivered and, and reworked by, by wave. Such that this is a very famous diagram of deltas. It's a triangle of rivers, waves, and tides with the, with the mixture of those energies 
producing very distinct landforms. This is actually what developed at LSU in their Delta Research Program at Coastal Studies Institute. One of the famous diagrams uh, out of that research institution. The point that I, I, I want to lay down here is that by understanding the physics and from that process of movement of sediment, you can develop an understanding of fundamentally and predict uh, the outcome of the weight of the land. Now, let's talk about sustainability. Delta sustainability is driven by the relative, and, and what I have shown you mainly is a planar sort of shape, right, on the surface of what delta will look like. Let's look at the vertical, because the vertical actually is a critical piece of sustainability. Because there are two forces that influence whether a delta stays emerged. When I say landform, what I mean is that that delta sediment has its chin above water. That's 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 land. If you're if you're if you're underwater, you're water. <laughs> I don't care how much sand is there. Uh, you to be land, you have to be above water. All right, so fundamental. And and to stay above water, there's two forces you have to deal with. One is the rise in the seas, because the water levels are rising, right? And the, and the rate of which they're rising is changing. And in Louisiana, we have a thing called subsidence, where our land is sinking. So we have a concept called the relative rise of water level because our deltas have to build elevation that can compensate both for the rise in sea and the sinking of land. For example, if you say the sea level rise, say on the average, used to be five years ago, maybe a decade, two millimeters a year, the sea level rise, we have parts of our landscape sinking at eight millimeters a year. We have parts of our landscape here in Louisiana sinking four times the rate of sea level rise. That's a tenth millimeter rate of change in elevation per year. And that means you have to have 10 millimeters of elevation built every year to compensate for that. And the way, and so this top set, when you see deltas across sections, they can compensate the sea level rise if they can build this desktop or this tabletop or a four set or, or a top set. Of a, of a delta at a rate that's equivalent to, again, land sinking and, and sea level uh, rise. And, oops. And there are evidence, historical and geologic, strong evidence, that in fact deltas can survive sea level rise and subsidence. If what? They have the sediment supply. If the sediment supply is sufficient, these are actually a 1.4 kilometer thick uh, seismic section here in the Delta of Louisiana done by the group at the University of Texas. And you can actually see the top set and the fourth set of historical deltas under different scenarios of sea level rise and subsidence. You know, I tell people, uh, it's funny, uh, you know, Louisiana, we, we've had subsidence, sea level rise, and hurricane for 6,000 years. <laughs> And the Delta did very well, thank you. I mean, it survived. It, those are not new uh, parts of the, of the formula of how Delta landscapes survive, but it's different in the supply of uh, sediment. Now, what's interesting in Louisiana is that sediment supply has not always been at the same location. And this is very unique to coastal Louisiana compared to other Delta. What you see here is actually a sequence by which the river has meandered east and west over the last 6,000 years. And wherever it occurs, it actually supplies sediment, and that's where land is built. So the vertical dimension is enhanced by the presence of the river. Uh, the analogy I use for my students is I'm sure they've all seen the cartoon where the firemen get out and there's this long fire hose, and they're standing back, and the fire hose is there at the end of the stage, and they're holding it here, and someone you know, turns the fire hose on. And that fire hose does what? It starts lifting back and forth. This is probably in there somewhere. Somebody can find it. I'm not sure. And so basically, the river has been held here and is meandering back and forth. And each time, in each location, it builds a delta. When it moves to a separate, uh, a different location, in fact, here's New Orleans. This is the St. Bernard Delta. This was built 2,000, 2,800 to 1,000 years ago. So you're sitting on landscape. Delta load that was that was formed during that uh, when the river was at, at this location. 